All right. Well, thank you, everybody. We'll go ahead and get started. Sorry for starting late. Yeah, I had a little bit of a party. So um, plenty and plenty of cake, at least right now. Nothing but cake. It's hard to say that. So, of course, happy birthday to Kim Barncastle. She is 29, 30 again, something like that, every year on March 29th. <laughs> And then little Brielle, not the Brielle that's playing the keyboard tonight, but Brielle, Brother Mark Hughes' granddaughter, six years old. Well, no, no, see, the first time we told you you're not little. <laughs> the little, little one. <laughs> the other little Brielle, the one that's in the kids' class. Whatever. The other Brielle. <laughs> hey, I'm getting, hey. Hey, I'm getting old, man. It's my birthday. I'm getting old. I'm getting old. But what is she looking at me? I'm like, what? Hey, just be happy. I acknowledge you. <laughs> That's all the cake. Amen. Well, we'll go ahead and get started. Now that we're all sugared up and everything, and uh, we'll get some worship going. And, and uh, anyhow, Savannah, we appreciate you very much. She's going to lead us in worship. She doesn't get offended. I hope not. <laughs> Amen. We'll get some prayer going in a bit. And, uh, and tonight, though, I do want to have some special prayer before it ends. We'll do it a little later, pos uh, possibly, uh, for Darlene. You know, I know I'm so thankful that you're here again tonight. She's going to be going through some treatment. And we know her faith is high. And uh, we know that God is not only able, but God will heal us, provide for us everything. I was praying today, early this morning. And the Lord just nudged me, and for me personally, he says, you know, you really focus on the problems, don't you? He said, you focus so much on the problem that you inadvertently magnify it. Why don't you just focus on me and magnify, and then in doing so, you magnify. He said, I could provide, I will provide for you. I said, I'm going to do this. I will heal you. I will. And you just went down the list. Now, that may, it, I know that's simplistic, but I'm saying it to you. God is our healer. He's our provider. He's everything. And so we magnify him tonight. Amen. Praise God. Why don't we do that right now? Why don't we lift our hands? Let's focus on the Lord, all the good things that he is doing and will do and everything he's done for us. Amen. Amen. Jesus, thank you, God, for everything that you have done for us, for every saint, God, that is here tonight, uh, for everyone, God, that doesn't even know you just yet, that we'll come through this mission and through this work. We praise you for it, God. We praise you for every healing that you have healed, God, uh, every body that has been healed. We thank you, God, for providing Jesus, for being our victory. We magnify you today, God. We magnify you above everything else. That, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Uh, we bless you. We praise you, Father. We thank you for your goodness today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship in song tonight.
thank you, Jesus. What a wonderful name it is. Amen? Praise God. Awesome. Well, hopefully there's, yeah, there's still some cake left, you know. Nothing but cake. <laughs> it was so good that they had to order it for the birthday celebrations from this past uh, weekend's wedding. What a beautiful wedding it was. Amen? Amen. Beautiful wedding. Such a sacred thing to see our children and uh, get married and, um, you know, walk down that aisle. So we're really appreciative of that. And, uh, well, this is going to be part two of our foundation. And um, it's just a, a series I want to go. That's what we're calling it, of course, our foundation. And um, this will be part two. Same scripture as last week, 2 Peter 1, 1 through 4. Uh, for the sake of time, since we got a little started a little later, uh, for good reason. Uh, I won't read that. Um, but our purpose tonight, la last week... Uh, we showed the Old Testament about um, who God is, and now we're going to show a little bit of the Old Testament, not as much, but more the New Testament, uh, because the Bible, the Word of God is like a chain, and you have all those links together. We cannot make a, you can't make a chain based off, you know, a couple, two, three links, and uh, you, you got to have a lot more links. And that's just kind of how the Bible is. There's a lot of scriptures. You can't base a doctrine off one or two, even five links, so to speak, scriptures. Um, but there's so many scriptures that support. If you could have at least two or three, yeah, you can, you can have that as a base for a doctrine. The doctrine is a teaching in the Bible. Um, but when it comes to the deity, the, the divine nature of God, who he is. Uh, there's multiple hundreds of scriptures. Um, and so we'll try to explain with some tonight. But the purpose is to show that Jesus is God manifested, which means revealed in the flesh, the Holy One of Israel. And he is the chief cornerstone of the foundation of the church. And without a true foundation, the house will fall. And we talked about that a little bit a couple of weeks ago, excuse me, and um, about how this foundation here, if it's not set right, flat and, and molded and, and cured the correct way, then what's holding it up or what's holding these walls up, the foundation, things will crack. Uh, in fact, it's happening uh, very well known in the news of late, uh, probably the last six months to a year. Uh, and of course, that Sunday night that those, uh, many of us were able to go to the Stubby home um, and we went and of course, uh, Todd Stubby said, look at this foundation in the back, it's falling and there's a big lawsuit in this this neighborhood there's about i don't know i don't know if there's 12 or 20 houses and so the, you know it, everything's falling his fence is falling his his nice patio is falling he said there was a jacuzzi we had it they took it out before we bought the house because probably the foundation and so uh just the foundation itself something that you really don't you, at least i perhaps you don't really pay attention much to if it's not set right it just dictates how everything else in that building and structure is going to uh, last or not. And so we need to have a right foundation of who God is. Um, going on to the next slide, Matthew 16, 16. Uh, this is Simon Peter. He was very brash, always said what he wanted to say. Kind of reminds me a little of me. Uh, and uh, just didn't think before he spoke, you know, said it. Then I was like, oh, wait, I shouldn't have said that. Huh? But Simon Peter answered and said, to, he's talking to Jesus. He says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And the Apostle Peter, uh, as we call him more so now, received a divine revelation that Jesus is the Christ. And it was recorded and Jesus told him, he goes, upon this rock, the revelation, Peter, of who you, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you, but my Father in heaven. And he says, and upon this rock, this revelation of who I am, Jesus, the church is going to be built. So God's already setting, Jesus is already setting, this is the foundation, this is how it's going to be built. Next slide, uh, 1 Corinthians 3, 10 and 11. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. In other words, you better pay attention how you build it. Don't just casually come to the scriptures and just say, well, I, I think this, I think that doesn't really matter. It matters to us. It's our souls. It's about our souls. So uh, continuing in, in the, uh, verse 11 here, for no other foundation, in other words, it's just one foundation, can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So the scripture is saying the foundation is Jesus Christ. And if Jesus is the foundation, we need to understand who he is. 
no other foundation except Jesus Christ. This means that salvation is only through him, Jesus Christ, and, um, and so forth. So let's continue here. Let's talk a little bit about prophecies of the coming Messiah. Now, the Israelis, the Jews, uh, Israelites, excuse me, were always looking for a Messiah, but they were looking for a political Messiah. It was Rome that was over them. And it would be, say, Russia is over America, and we're under their rules, and they put the governors, their Herods, uh, their Pontius Pilots, over Arizona, California. Those are governors, those kings, and they would put them. And there was taxes. And Matthew, one of the disciples, was a tax collector, a Jew, and that's why he was despised, because he was one of them, but he would collect taxes and so forth. Um, but they were waiting for a Messiah to overthrow Rome, the physical. Of course, when Jesus came, he says, my kingdom is not of this world. I'm not here to do that. I, I'm here for another purpose, your soul. I need to say, I go away to prepare a house for you that where I am, you're gonna, you can be also heavenly, spiritual. So they were looking for that. And so they weren't necessarily that one little area of their foundation in their mind made them miss who the real Messiah was. And that's how important it is. Jeremiah 23, 5 and 6, his name shall be called, talking about the Messiah, the Lord our righteousness. The name Lord in this verse means self-existent, eternal Yahweh, the Jewish national name of God. And we spoke about that in our last lesson. Micah 5, 2. But thou, Bethlehem, Ephratah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, Yet out of thee shall he come, talking about the Messiah, he, the Messiah, come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old and from everlasting. Let me pause here. There, it, it, I can see that possibly the nation of Israel, the Jews, looked at Micah 5, 2, and they said, he's going to come forward, he's going to be the ruler, the king of Israel. He's going to overtake Rome. He's going to push them out. And, and, and sure, who wouldn't want that? But again, just a little slight deviation of knowing the full truth can mess everything up. And in this case, many uh, missed that Jesus was among them, the true Messiah. Uh, so the Messiah is also everlasting. But that means no end to Jesus' kingdom. And how could this be unless God, the I Am that we spoke about two weeks ago, was revealed, manifest in the flesh. Um, in the New Testament... Jesus affirms the Shema. Remember the Shema is the prayer, the number one prayer that all hero Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. That was the number one commandment. And so he affirms that as the first and greatest commandment. In Mark 12, 29, Jesus says these words. He says, and Jesus answered him, the scripture says, the first of all the commandments is, the first, not the second, first. He's building a foundation. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. He just affirms it. Um, and let's talk a little bit more. Let's go to the next slide. Still on prophecies of the coming Messiah. Uh, Jeremiah 23, 5 and 6. Actually, you know what? Yes, I added that again and again and again. Oh, that's not what I needed. I just repeated that. Look at that. I'm getting older. It's my birthday. I'm repeating. Don't worry about it. I'm still okay. I'm kidding. <laughs> let's go to the next slide here. Revealed in flesh. All right. John 1, 1 through 14, now the famous portion of scripture. Uh, we don't have time to read it all tonight, uh, but we, we understand what it's talking about. And here it's talking about the word, that it, the word is God. He is the word and was made flesh, made flesh, that's human, like you and I, and dwelt. In other words, that word dwelled or dwelt means tabernacled. So the word God, the father, Spirit was made flesh and dwelt in a tabernacle, in a body among us. And we know who that is today. 1 Timothy 3.16. Again, we're building links here. And, and there's so many links. There's over 300 links, if not more, uh, of, of prophecies and things coming about this. And so I'm just showing you some because for the sake of time, we can't give everything. But 1 Timothy 3.16. And without controversy. In other words, God said this foundation is laid. There's no controversy about it. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, revealed in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among Gentiles, that be you and I, non-Jews. Uh-oh. 
knock it. Man, I am getting old, I'm telling you. It's getting crazy here. <laughs> Preached among the Gentiles. You and I believed on in the world, received up into the glory. Now, that basically, yes, is describing Jesus. He, he was here, justified the spirit, was in the flesh, justified the spirit, preached to everybody, believed on in the world by some, and then received up in glory, the resurrection power after three days he died. Um, so God, the I am, was revealed in flesh. Colossians 2, 8, 9, beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, basic principles, foundation, and not according to Christ. For in him dwells all, not some, but all the fullness. Fullness. What does full mean? It means it's, it's full. It's, there's no more room. In him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. That everything. Jesus is 100% God in the flesh. Amazing. Praise God. All the fullness of the Godhead. In other words, let's break it down. All the titles. The I am. Jehovah Jireh. My provider, my victory, all those, th Adonai, all the titles given to him in the Old Testament, all the roles and all the offices dwell in Christ Jesus. Everything, the fullness, all of it. Amazing, praise God. Let's talk about God himself and his flesh a little bit, God of man. God manifest, revealed in the flesh, had a unique nature of divinity. What do we mean by divinity? In other words, being God. So let's say that again. God revealed in the flesh had a unique nature of divinity, being God, and at the same time being human. Sometimes he spoke as God, and other times he spoke as man. Uh, don't believe I put it in the notes here, but you will hear in the scriptures where they say the Son of Man. When they say Son of Man, they're talking about his humanity, man. When they say the Son of God, they're talking about the divinity, the power, the spirit of God. And so that's why you would hear the Jews sometimes, what blasphemy, why would you say such a thing? Only God can forgive sins. And God and Jesus is like, I'm him. I'm the Messiah. That's right. That's why I'm saying, son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Because Jesus is more interested in our soul. Our soul is the real you to get to heaven. He, he's interested in healing us and he will and he has. But it's his soul. So his purpose was to say, seek and save which was lost. Amen. And so that's what he came. John 2 and verse 19. Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple. And in three days I will raise it up. Now they thought he was talking about the modern temple. And they're getting all mad and all about that. But he's talking about him. He's saying this flesh. He's like, go, he was prophesying. He says, go ahead, destroy this temple. And what is the, the, the Holy Scriptures? What does the New Testament say? Well, after we receive the Spirit of Christ, evidenced by speaking in other tongues and other language, it says, what? Know ye not that ye are the temple of the Holy Ghost? And that Jesus, God, the, His Spirit used to dwell in man-made temples. But then after He died, when Jesus, that flesh died, that Spirit resurrected, that Holy Ghost comforter. And now you and I are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. And so... He said, destroy this temple, this flesh, and in three days I, see he's talking, he's God, will raise it up. <laughs> How can a dead man raise up his own body unless he was the almighty God? Amen. 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 And a little correction, not he was, he is the great I am, the almighty God. And so he resurrected it. So that powerful, that revelation. And so next slide here. Continuing on this, Mark chapter 2, verse 1 through 12. We can't read all the scriptures for sake of time, but uh, please write these and, and read it in your own time. Uh, I, I recommend reading it, even if you don't understand it. If you have questions, come see us. We can help. Um, but what I've known personally is I'll read it. Maybe a few weeks later, a couple months later, I read it again. And it's revelation, revelation. Because not only is the word of God like a chain of links, the spirit of God is the same way. It will always line up with the word. Spirit and truth always line up together. But spiritually speaking, you'll get a revelation on the word. And then a couple months later, as you're reading again, God will show you a little bit more. He's building that foundation in your mind and your soul as well. So recommend that. But for sake of time, we can't read it. But in, in, in Mark 2, 1 through 12, Jesus forgave the man of his sins. Talked a little bit about that. And the scribes, the ones that would write the holy word of God. 
that should know the foundation well, said, who can forgive sins but God only? Because all you'll find in the scriptures, they're so mad and livid. You see, the Jews had a revelation that God, the Father, the Spirit, was going to put on flesh a tabernacle and dwell among us. But one little deviation, one ingredient that they added, so to speak, in their mind was he's going to come and throw Rome away. He's going to he's going to liberate us in this physical kingdom. And that made them miss. So one ingredient made them miss everything. And so one ingredient could make us really miss everything. And so very grateful for the revelation of who God is. And so they knew that whoever, the Messiah that comes is God dwelling in the flesh. God Almighty in the flesh, 100%. And so when Jesus was like, son, your sins be forgiven thee. They were blaspheming. Only God can forgive sins. And so they were affirming, not even knowing that it was God himself. Jesus proved that he was the I am by forgiving his sins and healing this man's body. Praise God. Next slide, please. Let's break it down just a little here. The humanity. Remember I said he was Jesus, 100% man and 100% God. The spirit of God has never died because it can't die. It's not, it can't believe. But the humanity side of God died. That flesh bled. The humanity of Christ suffered, was hungered, was thirsty, was crucified. He would say, I'm tired. He goes, I'm going to go to the desert and rest a little bit. Uh, he, he'd say, there's no, man, there's no place for the uh, son of man. He was talking about his humanity to lay his head at rest at night. He would say things like that. He suffered, he hungered, he was thirsty, and was crucified. Why did God have to be a man at the same time? Well, one, yes, because... You know, remission of sins. Remission means remitting, removing, washing it away. Cannot be washed away because of God's law. It says that somebody has to be punished. Blood has to be shed. That's why with Adam and Eve, first thing, it's a type of baptism right there. What happened? He killed an animal, and that means there was blood shed, and then he clothed them. If clothing doesn't matter, then why did God do it? And that's another lesson for another time. And so you, you see these revelations all the way from the first book of the Bible, Genesis. And so he suffered. So that's the first reason that he, he, he was human. The second reason, in the book of Hebrews, it talks about that we have a high priest. The high priest comes and represents you in, in, in the temple in Old Testament times and would bring once a year that blood sacrifice into the Holy of Holies, that Shekinah glory that dwells in each of us that have his spirit tonight. And so, and if, if that high priest was... Uh, had any slight, just little slight sin, they, he would die. I mean, I do not want to be the high priest. <laughs> I'd be like, if I were in that lineage, I'd be like, no, thank you. <laughs> Maybe a priest, but I ain't going in there. <laughs> but, um, and, and sprinkle that blood on the mercy seat. And so the Bible, the Hebrews, New Testament says, we have a high priest. Jesus is our high priest. He not only just sprinkled his blood on Calvary, he, it, 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 he died and shed blood for us. And so he's our high priest. But it also says in the book of Hebrews that he was tempted in all ways like you and I. He was tempted to curse. He was tempted to be angry. I'm sure if they had automobiles there, maybe it was donkeys, you know, road rage, road donkey rage. I don't know. <laughs> Dirt road rage. Who knows? You know, he's like, all right. He's like, yeah, that's what you are. <laughs> you know, and so... Uh, <laughs> And so yet all the temptations of lust, of stealing, of lying, of jealousy, of bitterness, of, of, of holding offense. Because the Bible, Jesus said offenses will come. We're going to get offended. And, and so yet all those things. And so here we go again about the truth, the word of God and spirit. Here's the spirit aspect of it. This is why you need the Holy Ghost. Not so that resurrection power can only get you to heaven. But for the everyday living, that fruit of the spirit of where, ooh, I want to say something, but I better not. Ooh, I, you know, I'm, I'm facing some anxiety and depression. I can't do it. But Spirit of God, could you help me, Holy Ghost, comforter? And so he was tempted. And so you and I can overcome because the Spirit of God dwells in us. Because he overcame it. Amen. So there's the humanity aspect. The deity of Christ, of the God, the Spirit. He healed the sick. No man can heal, but God can only do it. Raise the dead. No one can do it. You know, they can copy DNA and duplicate and clone and do all this kind of stuff, that's man. We were made in the image of God. And so that means that our, the way we think. And so let me give you a case in point. God is creative. 
He made the heavens and the earth. We can't do that. But you see man, even from the Tower of Babel, airplanes, technology, and music, and, and we're projector. We're creative just like our father. We hate. Now, unfortunately, we hate. Typically, humanity hates what they shouldn't hate. And, uh, but God hates what? Evil and sin. Pain on us. We have jealousy, but we use it for the wrong reasons. God is a jealous God who wants us to serve him only. You see the image of the qualities that we are. And so man can try to do everything they want, but they can't raise the dead and they can't heal the sick. And uh, he also, as God, brought his own body from the grave. He raised it up and ascended to heaven. And so you have all these superheroes and perhaps I'll, I'll preach on it Sunday if I feel led of the Lord. I think we were texting Brother Kendall and I and, and um, Baal in the Bible was always the, 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 a, a thorn, shall we say, to the nation of Israel. God's people, his physical people. And um, the word Baal comes from the word Jezebel, the Canaanites. And you see that in Jezebel, that spirit always trying to control, always trying to get in the way and, and oppress you and, and, and all those kind of things. But Baal was the God of lightning. And that's why when Elijah showed up and he says, okay, let's see who has some firepower here. <laughs> and he was laughing. And he said, oh, go hell, maybe, maybe your God's asleep. And he, he prayed and, and fire consumed that altar. So man can try to mimic, they can make a myth all they want, but only God can bring the fire down and only God can heal us. And you know, here's the beautiful thing is, we're not talking about testimonies. I have some testimony. I've seen my dad raised from the dead in the hospital. I've seen people healed and everything. And not only do I have testimonies, but we have one right here healed of cancer. We have another one, Sister Arlene's gonna be healed of cancer because that's God and that's who we serve, amen? Praise God. And thank him not just for giving us the truth, I feel the Holy Ghost. Would you lift your hands and thank the Lord right now? Jesus, Heavenly Father, we thank you today. We thank you, God, that you have truth, but it's powerful in your spirit, God, all-knowing everywhere. And, oh, you're our healer. Jesus, we worship you. We focus on you. We are looking to you. We are magnifying you, God. Uh, if God be for us, what and who shall be against us? Nothing, God, uh, for you are all-knowing and all-powerful, Jesus. Uh, we are thankful that we are your children and that you love us enough, Lord. Uh, we bless you, Father. We thank you, Jesus. Uh, what an awesome God you are. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God is a good God. Yes, he is. Next slide here. Jesus is the true God. I'm almost done here. And um, 1 John chapter 5 and 20 reads this. And we know that the Son of God has come. Again, talking about Son of God. It's talking about the divine nature of God, the Spirit. We know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding, knowledge. That's why we need truth tonight and the Spirit of God. That we may know Him. That's how important it is. First John 5, 2, he has given us understanding truth so that we can know who God is, that foundation, that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true, in his son, Jesus Christ. And then it finally says this in the scripture. This, talking about Jesus, is the true God and eternal life. What a blessed revelation that that is. Amen. And in my notes here, I think it went blank. I'm going to see if they have it. See. Oh, my, yes, I know what's going on with here, so I'll turn around. My last slide tonight, all the way from Genesis to Revelation, is this truth of the mighty God, that spirit in Christ Jesus. 100% God, 100% man. The first and the last, Revelation 1, 7, 8. Too bad Brother Malloy ain't here. Maybe yeah, I could teach him or he teach me. <laughs> Revelation 1, 7, 8. Behold, he. You see that capital H. It's in reverence to the Lord. It's talking about God, He, Jesus. Behold, He is coming with clouds, and every eye will see Him, even they who pierced Him. Talking about the Jews, His own physical people that pierced Him. You know what's going to happen when they see Him? This is my imagination. They're going to look at Him and say, the Messiah has finally come. And it's you, and He's going to say, they're going to say, He's, I'm Jesus. They're going to say, you're Jesus. And they're probably, and even before He says He's Jesus, they're probably going to say, Master, where'd you get that wound? Oh, some friends gave it to me. Master, what, what, what are these holes in your hands and your wrist and, and your feet? Oh, some friends, some family gave it to me. Who are you? I'm Jesus. And that revelation is going to come. Because God never quits on you. You may quit on God, but he will always pursue you. Amen. So behold, he is coming with clouds and every eye will see him and every 
and even they who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. This is Jesus speaking. I am. In the last chapter, he told me in the Old Testament, in the last chapter of the book, he's still saying, I am. I am the Alpha, that means the first, and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I'm everything. I, I, there's nothing, no man beside me. There's nothing. I am everything you need, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Praise God. Revelations 1, 12 through 18. Again, write that down. Read it. Uh, two key points about the scripture backing up, you know, the verses up there. It says Jesus is the Alpha Omega. We know that, but it says Jesus is the first and the last. Jesus is the first and the last. And so what a great foundation to know this knowledge and to know it. But we cannot know the truth without the Spirit of God giving us revelation to it. The Bible says that he resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. In other words, and he talks about the meek shall inherit the earth. Meek means that you're not always trying to put yourself first. You're thinking about others. And, you know, another scripture where he rebukes the disciples and they say, Jesus doesn't have time for you. And he says, hey, Matthew, Judas, I think it was. He said, suffer these little children that come to me because such is the kingdom. That's for the king of God in heaven. And in other scriptures, he says, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. In other words, you know, when you're last, you're like, yeah, I, I know I'm not the best. You're last, you're like, I'm not the fastest, or I'm just, you know, you're just, you're not first. You're not second, you're the last. And you have an awareness that I don't, I don't have it all together. And it's that kind of spirit and attitude, that meekness, that humble and says, God, I don't have it all together. I don't know everything, God, but all I know is I'm hungry for you, Lord. And he says, they that thirst after his righteousness shall be filled. And so... That's what we're doing tonight. That's what we're here tonight because each and every one of us, we're hungry. What God gave us last year, six months ago, 10 years ago, I want more of it. I'm kind of greedy and I know you're kind of greedy. God, give me more revelation of it. And to get that revelation, just stay humble and say, God, I don't know everything. I know I'm not a perfect person, but would you have mercy on me? And would you show me some more of your truth? Amen. Praise God. I'm so thankful for that tonight. So thankful for the truth. And I'm so thankful that we have children and young people next door that they're learning it. And, you know, thank God they're patient over there because, you know, um, kind of like a ton of me and more probably. <laughs> yeah, I, I was a rambunctious kid, of course. But it may not seem like they're paying attention, but there's some seeds put in them. And there's some seeds going in them. And I believe that, you know, there, things are going to happen now. Not, not 10 years from now. But even a year from now, you're going to see some of our children. We've already experienced it at, at junior camp a couple years ago uh, from this very work here. Frank Mendes and them, um, his, his little boy got the Holy Ghost at seven years old. You see, God's no respecter of persons, but he is a respecter of hunger. And so he won't respond. I'm going to give it to you because I think you look better or you're just, you know, richer or whatever it is. But he is a respecter of hunger. They that thirst and hunger after his righteousness shall be filled. And so we want our children to be hungry for this truth. And that's why we're doing it. That's why we're here tonight. Uh, but God's not waiting for us to 10 years. He's not waiting for you for 10 years to be hungry. He knows you're hungry now. And little Frank Mendes was so hungry for the Holy Ghost. He got the Holy Ghost. In fact, he was, uh, I think, one of the second or third one to get the Holy Ghost here uh, recently. Uh, anyhow, he goes to junior camp. No one taught him. We didn't give him a seminar. Okay, this is how you repent. This is what, you know, how people need to repent, and this is how you say it, or, and, and then you're going to lay hands, and then you're going to feel this, and then and it's like, woo, you know, whatever. <laughs> and uh, this is going to happen, and then you're going to get the Holy Ghost in your tongue. <coughs> Excuse me. He looks at little uh, Abram Sosueta, Abram Sosueta, and <coughs> he simply says, do you want the Holy Ghost? And he goes, yeah, I want the Holy Ghost. <laughs> he goes, okay. We're going to repent right now. You need to ask Jesus to forgive you of all the bad things you've done in sin, and, and then after that, now, you know, no one told him he's not a preacher. <laughs> Maybe he is called a preacher. We don't know. We'll find out soon. And he goes, and then after you're done repenting, you need to say hallelujah. You need to praise God. Everybody that gets the Holy Ghost praises God. Hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. And I'm gonna, you're going to feel something warm inside you coming up. And I'm going to lay hands on you. And you're going to get the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and so they do the thing. He lays hands. And little Abraham says, what the gets the gift of the Holy Ghost. Because God is no respecter of persons if you're this age or this small. Right now, if you're hungry 
He'll give you the Holy Ghost. He'll give you more truth. Amen? Amen. Praise God. And I believe He's going to do it for our families as well. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. One more time. I really feel like just praying. I know it's Bible study night, but I feel a sweet touch of the Holy Ghost. You, you, he just came in a little bit. But I just feel like praising the Lord tonight for that truth. Amen. Let's, let's bless the Lord. Say that again. Yes, because of the situation. Yes. Um, we had, uh, we got a text those, uh, of course, Jacob Missy got it. My wife and I got it. At Miranda High School today, a kid brought a, a gun to school. Um, and we know the situation, if not all of us, that the individual brought uh, it's Tennessee, Nashville, a gun and went to a Christian school, shot. It was at five people that died, three or children, and uh, a transistor individual uh, that, let me put it this way, we love the, the sinner we don't, and we hate the sin. Um, and I'm not going to excuse anything, but spirits are just vile. And in these last days, they're just vile. They're going, they're more unleashed. We know we're in the end time. But we know who we serve to. Amen. And we know humbly we come before the throne of grace and say, God, could you help? And it was this Tuesday that I felt something. I really did. I, you know, and I didn't think nothing about it. I just really felt it was Monday and Tuesday. Kids are come, uh, going back to school from spring break. And I said, Lord, would you protect my boys? Would you protect them from every spirit? Would you get your hand upon them and, and their schools that they're at on Tuesday? And in fact, Solomon uh, mentioned, he goes, you know, today when he got home from school, he said, you know, Dad, I was feeling this week to pray for protection over my high school. Amen. I mean, man, isn't that amazing how God partners and labors with us and says and speaks to us. And there were just thoughts. There weren't goosebumps. Sometimes God impressed but it was just a thought that I had. Solomon. And so that kid brought it today. And I know there was an angel of the Lord, however, God did it. And all of a sudden, another kid saw that gun, reported it. The school safety officer came, took that gun. And, you know, unfortunately, the kid is arrested. And, but, and I'm not trying to be dramatic, but we know that worse things could have happened. We know that other things. We don't know what's in the mind of these children. They're being infected by spirits. But we know the ultimate God, Jesus Christ Almighty, and he can do something and has done something. So let's pray for that high school. Let's not focus on the gun. Let's not focus on the body. Let's focus on God. Amen. Tonight, let our faith be built. Lord, in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Heavenly Father, we come before you. We know who we serve. You're the great I am. You're the Alpha Omega. You're everything, God. You're our protector. You're our healer. You're our kinsman redeemer. Uh, Jesus, you're the Holy Ghost. I'm praying, God, tonight that you would continue to give protection to all our schools here in this town of Marana. In fact, of all of Pima County, all the state of Arizona, God, we know, God, we humbly come before you. We know who we serve. We're coming, God, to your throne of grace uh, right now where it's more sufficient than anything else. Jesus, uh, protect our children and protect our students, oh God. Uh, we're asking God to protect our families in the name of Jesus. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you. We love you. We praise you. We thank you for all the promises that you've given us, God. I'm asking God uh, of a hedge of protection upon this group uh, and upon this local assembly, God, uh, that you not only protect us, God, from evil, but God, that you increase our faith, God. Uh, we magnify you, God. We glorify you, Jesus. I am praying for financial blessings upon this group. Uh, I am praying, God, that you unlock the door. Uh, pour out the window of heaven, God. Uh, I'm praying, God, there have been people giving in their tithes and offerings, God, uh, and you said, try me. You said, try me, and we're trying you, God, uh, and I'm praying that the abundant blessings of your scripture, God, be fulfilled. I know it will. We're focusing on you. God, we're praying right now for Sister Darlene. Uh, you placed us right here on Thursday nights uh, just around the corner from her house uh, and she found us, God. We had no connection, uh, but we had a connection with you, Jesus. Uh, and God, she is facing uh, a horrible situation, uh, but we know you and we focus on you. Uh, we bind the cancer. We bind the sickness. Uh, we bind the worry uh, and we bind the fear in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and we release your healing. Uh, we release the gift of faith. Uh, and we let the angel of the Lord protect her, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, we worship you. We bless you, Jesus. We magnify you, O oh King of kings and Lord of all lords. Amen. 
And so, God, I pray abundance uh, of healing, God, and protection. Uh, and I pray revelation, God, come to all of us uh, of who you are uh, and the true plan of your word and salvation fully in us, oh God. We are hungry and thirsty for your righteousness, oh God. We bless you, Jesus. Uh, we thank you, oh God, uh, that it wasn't enough for you just to create us as our Father, but you decided to die for us. You didn't send someone else. Uh, you love us so much. Uh, you put on flesh to die for my wickedness and sinfulness. Uh, in Jesus' name, we love you. We bless you, oh God. What a mighty God, the almighty God, the great I am. Uh, Oh, that you still are. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. What a great God. Thank you for being so sensitive to the Lord. Thank you. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. What a good God he is. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. I'm telling you, Brother Mark Hughes, just a few months ago, had a vision of a building here in Moran. He had a good, clear picture of it. I believe it beyond a shadow of a doubt. Uh, you know what that is? That's an invitation from the Lord saying, I got a building. What you going to do about it, Marana? What you going to do? Well, we're just going to keep on believing and prepare for it. Amen. So you got visions, amen, of your sons and your families being saved. I'm here to declare it and encourage you. It is done. It is done. It is done. We serve the great I am. He's a good God. Yes, he is. Oh, I feel victory in the house of the Lord today. Satan, we come against you by the blood of Jesus Christ. We bind you in Jesus' name from our marriages and our homes and our families. And we release the power of God in our homes. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yes, we do. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen. God is so good to us. Praise God, praise God, amen. I better shut up because I'll go all night. I love God that much. <laughs> amen. And I mean it. Thank you for your sensitivity. See, you partnered with the Lord. We are laborers with Christ. You partnered. Perhaps someone came in discouraged, but tonight you leave encouraged. Amen. Let's come with that expectation to church Sunday. There's a lot of cake still. Go ahead and eat. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. What a good God he is. Praise God.